What is up, my dudes? Welcome back to a fresh monthly favorites. I did just do my mid-year favorites and unfavorites for makeup. Those are my last two videos if you are not caught up. Those are going to give you a full download of where we've been for the first half of this year. And I'm only going to touch briefly on makeup favorites in this video and it'll be a little bit more other stuff. So you guys know how favorites work. Let's go ahead and jump in. Oh no, 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 the first freaking thing I left in the other room. Ow! Hey. Oh my God, the next video needs to be a declutter. Okay, so this right here is my first fave of the month. I ordered this because I'm easily influenced by my fashionable friends. The one in this case being State of Kate, Miss Kate Gardner. She posted about this hat saying that it was just long sought after and all of her trouble resulted in her finding the perfect hat. And I was like, okay, I want the perfect hat too. I ordered this, it is from Lack of Color, which is an Australian company. I have owned hats from them before, but this is the best one that I've had, mainly because the other ones were too small. I needed a large, extra large. I got a big old head fam. This is the Palma Fedora. It's about $115, I think, when you get done with shipping and everything like that. Pretty darn good price for a high quality hat. And I, have not stopped wearing it. I think it is so freaking cute. And I mean, it looks nice with my hair down too. I'll stick a photo in, but like, I don't know what it is. I moved to the Northeast and suddenly I wanna dress like a desert princess. Whereas when I was in Texas, I wanted to dress like I was in the Northeast. I just guess the grass is always greener, but also you can like layer and stuff here. Even, I mean, not necessarily right now, but you know, most of the year you can get away with kind of accessorizing a little bit more because it's not, totally sweltering for, you know, six months out of the year. So anyway, the hat has become like almost a fixture on my body. I've enjoyed it so very, very much. So that is my first fave. Wore it all over <laughs> New York City on Monday and um, <clears throat> it hit a world of sins because I was real, real sweaty. All right, the next one is a dress that is in the wash because I sweated all over it. But again, I will stick a photo in of it. It is from a company called Maury and Eve. And it is one of those dresses that I had seen come up on Instagram so many times and I deliberated and deliberated and deliberated until I finally just bought it. And it's so great. I love wearing white and I love gauzy sort of, you know, boho ethereal like summer dresses. And what I really like is when they're not linen, that instead they are actually gauze, almost like, you know, a, a baby burp cloth material or something. That's the first thing that comes to mind because when it washes, instead of wrinkling, it kind of puckers. And in this case, it did mean that it shrunk a little bit, but that's fine because it starts out pretty big. So I initially ordered too large of a size and ended up sizing down. I am a size six in their sizing and it is just like the perfect, a modest but not modest kind of dress because it covers your shoulders and your arms and it has like a lapel, but the first button starts pretty low. It's kind of like there. And so you can like see a bralette or something under it. It's very influencery, you know? But at the same time, it, it just, it's so airy for summer but also like keeping my shoulders covered so that they're not, it's, I have no self-consciousness about my shoulders. It's just nice to have something cover your shoulders when you're walking around town because I get sunburned really easily. So there are a bunch of styles on their website, a bunch of different stuff, but like that was the one I had my eye on and like they have it in other colors too. And I'm considering getting the other colors. There's an apricot and a sand. And again, you know, the reason I deliberated on it is because it's kind of expensive. I think by the time it ships from Australia, are you sensing a pattern? I don't know. I guess I just really like the Australian beachy aesthetic that uh, by by the time it got to me, I think it was like $145 or something. And now I have to pay to return the, the one that's too big. So, you know, learn from my mistakes. Um, do size down if you're between sizes, but I adore it. You know, if I were actually in my right mind and, and being honest with myself, I would order more than one of just the white ones, but I'm not gonna do that. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> the next thing we are gonna talk about is some makeup, but I have not talked about it yet. You will see this video on Monday, but I have it on my face right now. The new Salt of New York summer pigments, guys. And she did the color adjusters, but these are they. 
And uh, I, I will hide this from you because that is um, to be revealed in the next the next video. It's like my own custom mixed color. These are the two new ones. This is Terracotta and this is Flora and they are really, they're just really special. I like them very much, Lee. They look really, you know, bright and extreme. And I would say Flora definitely is, but Terracotta has a lot more subtlety to it than it looks like. It's not super duper orange. And Flora is just like a fantastic pop, you know, that's so, so summery. It takes some guts to formulate something that, that that's that pure of a pink, but it in, you know, small amounts is so flattering and healthy looking and in large amounts is just a party. So I'm very much enjoying those. And also her mixers are a whole lot of fun. She did send me all of those. So if you guys wanna watch me, go a little bit color theory crazy, then tune into that video on Monday. It, I can't even begin to get into it right now because it is, it's a whole thing. It's its own whole thing. Another thing that I just touched on in my roundup of all of my favorites, but it bears repeating because I can't stop wearing it. I'm wearing it right now. I love it. And it is the Thrive, their new concealer. I can always understand the motivations behind any of their products that they make, even if I don't totally love them. Like I'm not in love with their foundation because some of the ingredients don't agree with my skin. It feels a little bit heavy on me, but this is new and different and interesting and so lightweight, so lovely and gutsy, honestly, in that it is like a medium coverage concealer. It's like nice and brightening. So I have been really, really loving this. If you wanna see like a full download on that, I highly recommend going back and watching. I'm not gonna belabor it. I've been talking about this nonstop, but if I had skipped it, Joe would have been like, why didn't you mention the Thrive Concealer in your favorites? Is it not a favorite? It's totally a favorite. The next one, I actually made a, what do they call it? Like a reels about this, cause I was so excited about it. I fell in love with that Way Fine Hair Shampoo and Conditioner and I ran out of it because I liked it. And and when I went to repurchase it, they were like, what size do you want? And I was like, holy crap, they make refills. That is so neat. <laughs> I just went to, if you watched my vlog yesterday, I just went to this cool like eco-consciousness, environmental minded uh, art installation, immersive experience thing in New York City called uh, Arcadia Earth. And it just refreshed all of my senses about how we need to make conservation cool. And it's little things like this, where it's like, no, you don't need to buy, you know, five more jars. You can just buy these bags that refill. I mean, sure, you know, this also has to be disposed of somehow, but this is a small step in the right direction versus, you know, rebuying little tiny bottles, especially since those bottles are so aesthetically pleasing. Throwing them away makes me sad too, so now I don't have to throw them away. I very much enjoy this concept. And for all the people who are concerned that like my husband wasn't gonna like get over the smell of this, he hasn't complained about it since. And my hair is happy and I'm happy. And when mom is happy, everybody's happy. But yeah, good on you, Jen Atkin. Way to, way to look out for us. I did a poll recently on my Instagram where I asked you guys what bathing suits you recommended for small chested people. Because I have what I would consider to be a butt that's easy to fit in straight sizing, like no big deal. You know, bottoms, whatever, I just go by the measurements. But I mean, I learned in that bra video that I did recently that it's not just a small boob issue. Everybody's boobs are so different that like fit is so important. It's not just about size. And so I was asking you guys, I was like, what like cut? Like don't send me any of this like triangle cut crap because like they just, there's nothing for it to cling on. Like it just doesn't work. And so I needed a cut and you guys were like, try the scoop top from Aerie. A very important detail that I left out. <laughs> the recommendation was to buy them from the brand Aerie. I never say it. And so um, y'all were like, oh, try the scoop neck and try the, you know, the high-waisted cheeky uh, bottoms or whatever. Those bathing suits are so cute. However, because I ordered two of them, the quality is uh, commensurate with the price. 
So I ordered two of them. I got a pink one and a turquoise one. This is a story. This is a story. We're actually getting to the favorite. These are not my favorite. You know, I have to spend this time somehow. The things that I have found with the airy swimsuits is A, um, the bottoms are not double lined. So, or they're not lined, I guess you would say. They're like one ply. They're just fabric. And then the waist is like a fold over thing, at least on the styles that I got. And that's fine. But like when it's wet, you, you know, if there was anything that you were concerned about being informative about, like, you might be concerned. They're not bad in that sense, but like, I like to feel a little more secure in my swim than that. And it does feel like wearing a wet garment more than it feels like wearing like an engineered swimsuit. And the tops have started to grow. I ordered them in, I guess, a small, because when companies decide that they're going to design for a small chest, they almost always make the straps too short. And so I ordered a little bit up so that the straps would be long enough and they are, but the cups have like started, not the cups, but you know what I mean, where your boobs go, has started to kind of sag a little bit as I've washed them a couple of times. And so it's almost like the fabric is losing its elasticity really fast. Like if you wash something in hot water and dry it constantly, a bathing suit or something, it's gonna lose its elasticity over time. But like I grew up in Florida, like washing my bathing suits all the time. And like, I know it's not supposed to do that after like three washes. So I, I am a little bit frustrated with that as well. And finally, sure, sure, my husband is, figuring out the chemistry of the pool. This is our first time ever having a pool. And maybe it was a little bit heavy on chlorine one day, but like, they're not very color safe. The kind of minty one is turning like yaller <laughs> from the chlorine and kind of bleaching out and getting stained in the wash somehow. I don't even know how, nothing else is getting stained, but like they're, they're just, you can feel the quality or lack thereof in them. Now let's get to my favorite. And it started out very much as what I thought was going to be a fail. And that is a bathing suit that I spent $200 on from a company called Vitamin A Swim. Okay, there were a lot of reasons that I thought that I was not going to like it when I got it in the mail. And I think when I first tried it on, you, I did that dumb thing that you do where I just took the tags off because I was like, I don't, I, I'm gonna keep it, it's beautiful, whatever. And, but then I was like, oh, I should have gone for a bigger size or something like that because at first it was a little uncomfortable because it was a little bit, it felt small. It's another, like a scoop neck and it's ribbed and it is um, quite modern in its cut as far as like, you know, being high on the sides and kind of giving you a little bit of a thong action. And I was like, okay, I don't mind how that looks. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna become like a, you know, a skimpy bathing suit person, whatever. So it took me walking around in this bathing suit, swimming in it a few times, doing yoga in it a few times, and just kind of living in it for me to come around to feeling really confident in it because it's skimpy. And I kept thinking I should have ordered a bigger size, but now that I've worn it a few times, I think I got the right size. I ordered a small in the top and the bottom and they are double lined and they do stay put and they wash beautifully and the color is gorgeous and the fabric quality is fantastic. And I can do yoga in that swimsuit that is like pretty scant, okay? And they do make like less scant fits, but it's pretty scant and um, nothing moving nowhere. Just so confident in something that is covering me. It's a lot of money for very little fabric, but as my friend Lona pointed out, she's like, you are paying for it to stay where you put it. And that is exactly what it is. So um, yeah, I did a flip flop on this. So as far as my swimsuit experience is concerned, the airy swimsuits are beautiful cuts, but I would be willing to pay twice as much for them for better quality. And I ended up paying like five times as much for the vitamin A swimsuit, thought that I had completely overspent and that I was almost like ashamed because I wasn't gonna be able to return it. And it's ended up becoming my favorite swimsuit because I feel so stinking cute in it. So, um, that's my story. Is anyone surprised that I ended up arriving at the thing that was more expensive for higher quality? I'm not surprised. Um, there's a reason that I shop at the places that I do. I do buy for quality. And you know, in the pictures, the photo dump that I did from Monday, everybody was like, where'd you get your skirt? And I was like, I have had this skirt from Madewell since probably like 2017 or something. I hold on to clothes. I don't see them as having some kind of like fashion expiration date or anything. I buy things that I know I'm going to love and I hold on to them. And 
almost always when I buy something from like a fast fashion company, it's the thing I end up getting rid of the fastest too. So like a lot of my denim I've had for years and years and years. And same thing goes for a lot of other garments, um, outerwear, things like that. And I tend to resell them instead of just like tossing them. And so, you know, it shouldn't, I guess, surprise anybody that I paid $200 for a swimsuit. <laughs> but that's the one that's gonna last me, you know, and that's the company I'm gonna keep buying from, vitamin A. Wow, uh, moving right into something that is very similar. This shirt, I did talk about this recently. I got this on Poshmark because they were out of it on the website. I think that they have since restocked, but this shirt is from Young Maven. I've talked about Young Maven at length in the past, and I ended up ordering a couple of other things from them recently, and I want, I want to show it to you. I actually, I wore this on Instagram recently, I'm not sure, but um, I can't stop wearing this shirt. Oh dear, what is on it? I think my baby barfed on it this morning, but whatever. Anyway, um, this is one of their just like unisex tank tops. Their clothing is hemp. This is 55% hemp, 45% organic cotton. They're not inexpensive. This is probably like $46 or something. Like you're paying for quality and you're paying for made in the US ethically, what have you, from sustainable materials, renewable materials. Hemp is very renewable. It's garment dyed, which I love because it's just giving me that like earth tone desert vibes thing. I love my whole wardrobe just being earth tones, but I also ordered it in like this gorgeous garment dyed blue. I love this so much. I feel like I just need to show you the fabric up close because it's just not, like hemp feels different. Hello? It's really heavy, but it's also really soft and it gets softer the longer you own it. I don't know. And then also like, this is just a color that I feel like looks, it looks fantastic with like summer skin. It just makes me look tanner. And then um, this I've had for years, like years, years, like since, oh my God. I don't know, since it was a struggle for me to buy it, honestly, like I think I spent $100 on this uh, this sweatshirt and I've had it, I don't know, like 2018 maybe, something like that. And it was when I just decided, I was like, I'm gonna start buying for quality and see what happens. This is, I think their Sierra Raglan sweatshirt and it is the best fitting sweatshirt I have ever owned and I still wear it all the time, especially now that I'm in a climate where it's not as hot. I get a chance to wear it more often. And it is, I, I call it that like fit that you're looking for when you're shopping thrift or vintage where you're like, oh, I just want that like perfect 70s cut of like a raglan sweatshirt that they just don't make anymore. Because if you go to Walmart and buy, you know, a, whatever, you know, just like a basic sweatshirt, it's gonna be kind of boxy and bubbly and weird and it's gonna wash funny. These just get better the longer you wear them, the longer you wash them. Again, these gorgeous earth tones. This one's not garment dyed. You can tell because the tag is not dyed. So garment dyed means that they make the garment and then they dye it. So you can see that this tag has been dyed brown and this one's just not. But anyway, comes in a whole menagerie of shades, lots and lots of earth tones. And um, it's one of those things where because they're expensive, it motivates me to build my collection of them really slowly, but they will last you as long as you have them and then you can resell them. They are so high quality. Like this, this one's got a yin yang on it. I like that very, very much. Um, but I, I do, I buy for quality and you know, yes, this costs the price of probably three cheap sweatshirts, but it also like, costs less than like going and buying a sweatshirt that has this, this kind of like fashionable cut from some kind of high-end brand um, that is gonna be trendy and not last you very long in terms of like how long you like it. I think that, you know, they're so nondescript and in such kind of universal earth tony sort of shades that you can find something you like and it becomes something that you keep forever. So yeah, um, I the day that I opened this, I put it on and I slept in it that night and then I wore it the next day. It was gross, but like I couldn't stop. And then like after that, I was like, well, good thing about two because I wore the next one the next day and I'm considering buying more of them. The tank tops are so cute. And, and for all of my people who don't like to wear bras, they're really thick. 
So you can get away with not wearing a bra, you know, in most situations. I don't even think about it because they're unisex. So the armholes aren't too deep so people can't see, you know, your side boob too easily. And also it's thick. So it's like, you know, no matter what size your boobs are, if you're comfortable not wearing a bra, like this tank top is comfortable hiding you in that respect. <laughs> So, got you covered. Speaking of got you covered, I'm killing it on the segues today. You guys often ask me, because I talk about face sunscreens all the time, a lot of people are like, what's your favorite body sunscreen? I'll be honest, in Texas, you just don't go outside. <laughs> in the summer, you're just like, well, it's past 10 a.m., time to stay inside until it gets dark. And you just don't, either that or I was using something that was like, blue. It was so chock full of zinc. Like if I went for a run or something, I was using this old like Shiseido, like SPF 900 that was literally like titanium blue on my skin. It was not a good look. But anyway, I <laughs> coerced Supergroup into sending me this because I was like, um, I just keep burning through the little bottles that you guys send in PR. Any chance you guys could send me one of those big 18 ounces? If not, I'll just buy it. But they're like, no, we're happy to. And uh, thank you so much for doing that. I've always wanted one of these. They're like kind of an achievement. You know, you're just like, achievement unlocked. I have a giant thing of sunscreen. This is the super good play. This is like their original formula. And I didn't realize how good it is until I put it on my body because you put it on your face and you're like, dang, that's pretty dewy. Um, I'm not sure that that's like an everyday thing. It's a sports sunscreen. It's waterproof AF. Like it's waterproof up to 80 minutes. And if you're not like sweating or getting in the water or anything, they recommend applying, reapplying every two hours because it's a chemical sunscreen. But they took the octanoxate out of all of their formulas. And so this is avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. And let me tell you guys, it works. I am at my pool all the time. I am outside all the time. How many sunburns have I had this summer? None. Okay. And I don't put this on my baby. I have spe special baby sunscreen for him. That's, you know, mineral sunscreen. This is, you know, purely for me and the grown-ups in my family, but like I needed a large size because I just, I love it so much and it's the only one that I use right now. It's so effective. Like when you get this all on your body, you can forget about it for a while, you know? And that's the beauty of it. I, I literally like, I'm getting this kind of natural slow tan on my skin, you know, from being out in the sun and everything because it's gonna get through a little bit, obviously, but I have not burned anywhere and I, I trust this. Like it is peace of mind in a bottle. So that is why I needed, needed the large size is cause it's just, it's great. So for all the people who have been asking, what is my favorite body sunscreen? Do it. It's so good and it's so waterproof. All right, I got two books. One is The Artist's Way. I've been talking about this a little bit lately and I will say um, it's harder than I thought. It is a book that's supposed to help you kind of unlock and unblock your creativity when you either are an artist or a creative or whatever who has gone dormant or you want to start to tap into that part of yourself for the first time. It is like a weekly curriculum kind of thing and it's very structured, which is hard for me. So I've been working through it, like, you know, giving myself permission to do it at my own pace. And I know that, you know, that probably makes a lot of devotees to the process cringe because you're like, that defeats the whole purpose. But like, I took myself to New York City on Monday for an artist date. <laughs> it was all day, you know? Um, and it's just kind of like, I can't do that every week, but it was a good thing that I did. And it opened my mind in the right ways. But one of the main things that has um, stuck for me is the morning pages. So she says, just basically dump your brain out on three pages, three full pages uh, every single morning. My goodness, is that helpful? Wowzers, you know, it's so, so nice. But I mean, she's very like, she's very structured. She's like, you know, if you have too many things going on in your life, wake up an hour before everybody else and get it done before everybody else wakes up. And I'm like, look, if there are days that it doesn't happen because my child is insane, there are days that it doesn't happen because my child is insane. I just bought him a helmet, <laughs> okay? He just turned nine months today. It's a helmet because he needs to be life proof. The days that I do do it, which is probably like five or six days out of the week on, on average, are so utterly helpful. And 
it is effective at what it is. I have a lot of experience with self-help books. And so when I read these, you know, a lot of them have common themes and a lot of them, you have to kind of read through the things that you don't necessarily identify with at that moment that doesn't resonate with you in that moment in order to get to the things that like unlock something. Nothing's going to, after a while, be like 100% resonant with you. And so you have to be a little bit patient with it, but I, you know, I'm working through it and I have just started to rededicate more of my, my time and my energy back towards the fact that yes, being creative does help me in other parts of my life as well. That's one that I've been reading. And the other one that honestly is like the reason that I even put down the artist way is because I'm just like, I felt this need in my soul to like get back into reading Ram Dass. Ram Dass is one of the original, uh, you know, what they call them, the Harvard Psychedelic Club guys. You know, it was Timothy Leary, Ram Dass, uh, uh, Al, uh, Al, uh, I can't remember all their names. Regardless, I read Be Here Now a while ago. Be Here Now, it's a whole thing, okay? It's like a, a coloring book. It's like House of Leaves, Stream of Consciousness, Self Discovery. It's not linear but I've been reading Polishing the Mirror and it is very linear. It is many, 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 many years later in Ram Dass's life. He just passed in 2019, I believe. Brilliant human being. He was a professor at Harvard, but then he kind of, you know, got let go because of the, uh, the LSD experiments and things like that. But the main thing is he has a lot of wisdom around living in the moment and mindfulness. That is something that I have found to be the thing to return to whenever you are in some kind of kernel panic. In your life, if you are feeling like you are seesawing between emotions or you can't make decisions or you're worried about the future or you're living in the past, you're digging up old traumas, you find that you can't stop being wistful and nostalgic for your former self, if you are looking in the mirror and you don't like what you see, if you are afraid that you've done something wrong in your life or you regret it or that you don't have enough time left in your life to get what you want to get done, all of those are ways of not living like right here, right now. It doesn't mean like they're wrong, but it's important to make that distinction. And this book does such a good job from the standpoint of like, you know, being in the happy hour of your life, let's say, um, that he has like all of these great lessons and observations and wisdom and stuff like that that's written from a very practical standpoint. And you know, anybody who is like a seeker, quote unquote, and I, you know what? I don't think that it is like a detachment from reality to call yourself a seeker. I think that it is, well, maybe it is actually, because reality as we experience it every day can manipulate us into having emotional responses a lot of times that are really like traumatic and cause a lot of suffering. And there is such a lightness, a levity to the way that he talks about life that is going to help you separate the wheat from the chaff in terms of like, what is really, really important to you and helping you grow as a human being and what can be laughed, laughed about because it is what he calls the melodrama of life. Like you're kind of watching a soap opera unfold before you and just not detaching, but also not attaching. And you get there through like meditation and things like that. It's just so helpful for me. It's the source of so much of my happiness because it's something that is a lifelong practice, but the better you get at reminding yourself to live in the moment, the less you feel like time is getting away from you. I watched a video by Rob Beauty Christie. I actually didn't watch the whole thing because it was pretty long and it was just like, a, it was really heavy, like emotionally heavy where she was talking about how time is a thief and how she kept kind of early on in her baby's life, like wishing her life away and being like, I can't wait till he's this. I can't wait till he's this. I can't wait till he's this. And then suddenly she's like, he's got teeth and I'll never see my little gummy smile ever again. She started posting these commercials that she was seeing on um, like on Instagram about like, you know, someday will be the last day that you, you know, carry him on your hip and stuff like that and how emotional that was for her. And I found myself, you know, feeling that for her. But I, I also realized that like, I don't feel any of that time slipping away feeling 
and it's because I make such an effort, even when things are really hard and really annoying and sometimes kind of impossible, especially with a baby, to laugh at it and try to stay there with it instead of distracting myself from things that are hard. And that doesn't mean I'm perfect, but having that tool in your toolbox, in your repertoire, in your brain's muscle memory, to be able to, instead of like, you know, looking into your phone because your brain is uncomfortable and that's like an old neural pathway of being like, this is how I handle discomfort is to escape from it, to just like sit with it, I learned all of these things from Ram Dass. I did not invent any of this. So I have read a lot of this kind of stuff. Joe Dispenza, um, the, uh, what's that book? Um, the Untethered Soul, uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a You Know What. Like they're all kind of getting at the same thing. I didn't invent this, but Polishing the Mirror has been just lovely, lovely. I have laughed, I have cried, I've considered tattoos <laughs> and it's so freeing. So, you know, if you're at the point at a point in your life right now where you just want to be able to sit back a little bit from the drama of your life and like be able to have a sense of humor about it, it's incredibly, incredibly effective no matter what you're going through. That's what I've been doing lately. So yeah, guys, um, again, look forward to some really fun videos coming up. All of my Makeup by Mario stuff just came including, yes, I am finally, where is it? Oh no, where, ha, okay. I'm finally correcting the record on this because remember I lost this lip gloss in my old beauty room and when I moved, I didn't find it. So what did I do? I bought it again. And so I'm gonna have all of those in a video. I've got the Salt New York video on Monday. I've got a bunch of other stuff. Really, really exciting things. I'm looking forward to so much fun content. Um, and, uh, I think that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys with all of my heart so, so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, let's go eat. Mommy's hungry, 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 hungry.